just rewatched my videos to make sure that it was acceptable. And I realized I had that little white film on my mouth or whatever. So just forgive that because I'm not going to re-record because I'm not that insecure no more. Like y'all just have to get it how you get it. Just ignore it. Just get the information and just roll with it. Love you. Bye. All right, welcome back. So like, comment, subscribe, do all those good things that you guys always do to make me feel wonderful about all of my videos. Um, we're going to continue today talking about the process that I took towards healing um, because it was a long process and it was very essential to me being who and what I am today. If I would not have gone through it, then I would not be where I am today in this amount of time. Like, so I encourage you to not skip healing. I don't care how long it takes. Do not skip healing. All right. So the um, last video we talked about, um, the first three things that I did, excuse me. I always have so much indigestion when I make these videos. I don't know why, but, um, the last time we talked about the first three things that I did um, to initiate the healing process, number one was initiating um, no contact. Number two was defining narcissism and learning and educating myself on what it was that I was dealing with. And number three was getting quiet, eliminating all distractions. So today we're going to, try, I'm going to try to finish up all the steps that I took towards healing because I don't want this to be a three part video series, but if it does, then oh well, we're going to just have to roll with it. So the fourth thing that I did was I got a therapist. Um, I got a therapist like the day after I went through what I went through. Yes, it was the next day. Like I got a therapist. I went through what I went through probably on the 10th. And I got, I had texted my friend and asked her who her therapist was. By, by And I had an appointment with the therapist by the 11 because I felt so unstable that I needed help. And I'll say about therapy, I've never, until now, I've never gone to therapy because I never thought that I needed therapy because I never thought anything was wrong. Um, but I've never been anti-therapy. I knew that I wanted to do therapy with my husband whenever... Um, like premarital therapy and stuff like that. Like I knew that I wanted that. And there were some times in my life that I felt that I did feel like something was wrong with me, but I didn't really know how to describe it or whatever. So I, and I kind of like thought about therapy, but then I was like, you know, I can't afford it or whatever. And I just didn't go through with everything that I needed to do to start having a therapist. But I felt so unstable, meaning I felt like I was going to die and emotionally my heart was so broken until I didn't even know how to begin to pick up the pieces. Um, and I know I, I knew I needed something more than my friends and my family because I knew that they would not be able and they were not, you know, um, not, I wouldn't say educated, but not a therapist is a therapist for a reason because they went to school to be a therapist. So your family doesn't have time to give you that. They don't, they're not trained to give you that. They're not trained to know what to say. They're not trained to walk you through healing. They're not trained to deal with trauma. Um, so you can't depend on them for those things. So I know I needed something else. So I went to therapy and I would suggest therapy well, let me say this how I want to say this. I suggest therapy if you feel like you're not going to be able to make it. Um, because some people, depending on your spiritual life and your spiritual background and your spiritual strength, may not necessarily need therapy to get over trauma. Now, it's highly suggested because most of us don't have the tools, but, but to say that God can't do it without therapy, I'm not going to say that because I thoroughly believe if you delve deep enough 
into your word and if you truly ask him to lead you and help you and guide you, then I truly believe that he has the power and strength to do it all by himself. Um, but initially I was not trying to hear nothing about no God, um, because I was blaming him and I felt like, <laughs> obviously, sir, <laughs> You, me and you, we not talking right now because I don't know if I did something wrong. I don't know if, you know, me and God wasn't there. I couldn't hear that at the time. Like, yes, I've always been Christian. Yes, I was raised Christian. Yes, like, I know, but I could not hear that at the time. I, I'm sorry. All I heard was death. All I heard was it's over. Your life is over. You can't, like, I just, I couldn't hear nothing positive at the time. I don't care how much positive stuff people were speaking and saying and how much positive stuff I wanted to believe. I felt like I wasted five years of my life and my heart was broken and I felt like I was going to die. So I went to therapy, okay? And when I tell you, now, I didn't have many sessions of therapy. I probably went maybe five sessions at the most, but those five sessions of therapy were the most transformational times of my life that lady asked me questions i never even fathomed and one thing about it when i first started it that the first day made me feel so good like it made me feel like whoo like i can do this like i can get over this i can get through this but i found myself not knowing what to do in the time between our sessions like I didn't, I, I couldn't function. Like after that day that we went to therapy, I felt good that day. And I just couldn't wait to go back and see her the next week. And see, I felt like that was an unhealthy place. Because you don't need to be dependent on anything for your healing except for you and God. Because nobody else can always be there for you. That's my thing with therapy. And another thing that I have with therapy for narcissistically abusive situations is that if your therapist is not knowledgeable about narcissistic abuse and about that kind of trauma, then sometimes the things that they will say will lead you back into the relationship. Like, like there are some things that were talked about that were like, well, you know, I, after my research, I was like, so he never really loved me. Like, that's the conclusion that I came up with from my research that helped me stay away from him. But, but then my therapist who was not completely knowledgeable on the subject was like, you can't say, hold on, someone's calling me was like, you can't necessarily say that he didn't love you. Um, and that kind of made me think like, oh, maybe he did. Like, it made me feel sorry for him and it made me want to see him and it made me want to, to make up the relationship or to find some excuse to stay. And that's dangerous. So that's the part I have with therapy is that if it's not a person who's knowledgeable, who doesn't know how dangerous being in a narcissistic re relationship can be and how dangerous these people are or could become, then it will convince you that that person actually cared about you, which at a vulnerable moment that you will be in, it will be the main thing that'll slide you back into the narcissistically abusive relationship. And, and then it's only going to be worse when you go back. So I say do therapy if you feel like you're going to lose it, but don't depend on it. And if, if it's not going in the direction that's leading you out of the relationship, then you need to stop and you need to, you need to either find a therapist who is knowledgeable about it, or you need to seek the Lord and he will lead you to the things that you need to be led to in order to reach full healing. And, and, and maybe, you know, after you have gained the strength and knowledge to not go back, to not call this person, to not, you know, try to re-initiate the relationship, maybe you can go back to therapy because at, at that point your mind is like back to you again. But it's just, it's just a dangerous place to be in. Anyone who says you need to consider going back to a narcissist is the, the is not the person that you need to be listening to
and that's not the person you even need to talk to. Like that's, we're going to get into, you know, who you need to talk to in a minute, like how it's going to feel, but you can't talk to everyone because everyone is not healed enough. Everyone is not knowledgeable enough to know the danger of being with the narcissist. And so they're not going to always give you the correct advice. All right. Um, so that's number four. The number five thing is don't stop doing the things that you enjoy. Don't stop exercising. Don't stop eating healthily. Don't stop walking. Don't stop going to work. Don't stop your projects that you may have been working on. Don't stop going to school. Like, do not let this traumatic situation, this breakup, ruin you and who you are. Don't stop getting cute if you like to get cute. Don't stop wearing your makeup if you like to wear your makeup. Don't stop doing those things. But instead of you doing those things for another person or doing those things for social media or doing those things for outside attention, you're going to be doing those things for you because those are the things that make you feel good. Exercise is what's going to um, initiate, bring, I think it's, dopamine or whatever anyway what well, it gives you a boost it might not be dopamine it might be serotonin i don't know <laughs> they probably opposite but exercise is what's going to give you the boost that you need to like kind of regain your confidence kind of like get yourself rolling kind of even if you're not exercising to lose weight it's going to just be a healthy thing for you to do. When you exercise, you feel better. Your body feels better. Your mind feels better. When you eat healthily, you feel better. Your body feels better. Your body looks better. Your mind is better. So don't stop doing things that promote health. Don't stop getting your nails done if you've always got your nails done. Don't stop, I don't know, coloring if you've always colored. Whatever it is that you have always done that makes you happy, that brings you joy and peace, do not stop doing those things. Just do those things for yourself, not for other people, okay? And also on top of that, I don't want you guys to get caught up into the self-care thing that is so popular right now. Like lighting a candle do not does not fix a broken heart, okay? I don't care. <laughs> like all those little things that people say, hey, you need to do this. You need to take a bubble bath. I, I have not took not one bubble bath and I am completely healed from being in a like narcissistically abusive relationship. So don't get caught up on what the world deems as self-care. Self-care is healing. Self-care is knowing who you are. Self-care is like knowing who you are is self-care. Becoming a whole woman is self-care. Preparing rightly for your husband that you know and believe that God has sent is, is creating and not creating for you, but like preparing for you is self-care. That, that's what self-care is. Working out. Not all this little stuff that makes you look like you are cared for on the outside. Because one thing I've learned, it don't matter how you look on the outside. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter what your hair look like. Child, if you broken, your relationships are broken and it, that doesn't mean anything. And then you're not happy because we are made to be in relationship with other people. We're made to be loved. We're made to love others. So money doesn't fix toxicity. Money don't fix brokenness. A cute face and makeup and nails and earrings don't fix none of that. Okay. Going on a vacation across the world, broken. It's just, you just broken in another place. Instead of being home broken, you broken in another place. So healing is self-care. Healing. Whatever methods you use for healing are what, or what is what self-care is. Not all these outside things, all these things outside of yourself. That's not what self-care is. That's just what society wants you to think self-care is so they can make some money off of you. And you still sitting here making bad decisions, being broken, not happy, looking at other people, wanting their lives. And they broken too. Okay? All right. Um, next, I think we're on six. Yeah, six. Patience. Patience. And I'm one to be talking because... 
I'm the type of person that I don't have time to be crying over no foolishness. I don't have time to be taking forever to do nothing, to get back to myself, all this and that. Like, I just want to like, okay, give me two weeks. We done. Like, let's move on. Let's move forward. That's the type of person that I am. When you have been through something like this, not being patient only gets you in the situation again. And I think that we have learned that from my life that I have not been patient all the other times that I've broken up with people and it led me back to the same types of people, even worse situations that took even more time out of my life. So I was determined to go the route, no matter how long the route took, I was going to go the route and stay on the route because impatience doesn't work for healing. Impatience doesn't work for wholeness. It's a journey, okay? There, there are going to be some stages that you're going to go through. Stages of, I, I mean, some people say the stages of grief don't work. I don't know, but at least me reading about the stages of grief and recognizing what stage I was in, even though it's not a, it's not a, like a straight road, like you may g come to denial and then you may be in acceptance and then you may, um, topple off over the anger. Like it's not a straight line, but you will go through those stages and you need to allow yourself to go through those stages because if you skip them, they're going to resurface at some point again in your life. Okay. So let me just go with the, uh, the stages of grief. Um, I'm just going to say them just so you can know what they are. Um, I got denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And like I said, you may go through these in any order. You may feel like you should be done with one stage and then a week later be back in that same stage that you thought you had dealt with. That is completely normal. It is completely normal to, to question everything after you've been through something as traumatic as this. So I just want you to have, get a heads up on what you are going to experience and what you will have to go through because if you don't go through it, you will not be whole from it. You will not get out of it what you were supposed to get out of it, okay? Let's see, what other things did I do? Um, I journaled, journaled was re journaling was really big. And that's something that when I was going to my therapist, she told me to do because, and there's some, that's something that I kind of educated myself on too. When I was trying to learn how to heal from the abuse, a lot of people said journaling. And when you journal, it means that you basically write how you feel. Like you write how you feel. And initially I had downloaded some apps that helped me kind of check on myself throughout the day that helped me be honest about how I was feeling. Um, and I would journal at night. I would just say like what I felt like the, today was a good day or today was today sucked or, and I, I mean, in addition to my journaling, I made videos, uh, like just saying, like recounting my experience each day. Um, I would write letters to him. I wrote a letter to him just telling him how angry I was, how disappointed I was. I didn't ever send the letter, but writing it, writing out my feelings just helped me to get it out so that it wouldn't continue to ruminate inside of me, creating all these emotions. You just need to get it out. And you're not always going to have somebody to talk to or someone who is healthy and strong enough to even be able to receive all of this stuff from you. So you have to find ways to cope and kind of like pacify yourself. You can't be depending on all of these outside things to pacify you because then when you come into another traumatic situation, you know, you're not going to have the tools. So now is your time to find the tools to deal with your trauma. Like this is, these are tools to deal with any kind of trauma. You have to write out your feelings. You're not always going to have your psychologist, not always going to be available. Like if you're going down at 12 AM and you know what I'm saying? Like you really can't do it at 12 AM. You need to have a method that you can do on your own when it's just you and, and God, if you believe in God. 
okay? Um, so journal your feelings. I even wrote letters to the girl telling her how mad I was at her, you know, and I just did it. I did it all until it was out, until I felt like, you know, just some type of relief. Because at those times, there's going to be so much stuff inside of you. You're just going to need some type of relief. So I journaled. And the other, one of the um, almost last things that I want to say is that I, de I delved in deep. Sometimes that can be good. Sometimes that can be bad. Because I delved in deep, real deep in the beginning. And it was some other type of stuff that I was doing that wasn't the right type of stuff. And we're going to have a video about that to like what not to do but i delved in deep to in my healing when i found out i was broken i was like oh no uh-uh we we don't have time I, you are 33 girl <laughs> like you supposed to have all this stuff by now nobody has time Nobody has years and years and years to be recovering. Like, I don't have that kind of time. Like, people want to be 50 and take 10 years to heal. That, that's, that's their problem. But that's not Dana Ray. I don't have time. Like, you know, like, in, in my situation, nobody died. So, I don't have time. time. And time does not heal all wounds. God heals all wounds, but it ain't time because if you ignore the wound, time is not going to patch it up, baby. And time ain't going to make sure it's not ripped back open. This type of healing requires a, what, a state sutures that are going to dissolve and never resurface. You need to, you need to heal from toxic relationships and you need to never never have to deal with another one again you like this ain't the type of band-aid type of stuff this is that's the problem with the world today all these broken people walking around because they don't put band-aids on situations that require surgery so deal with it so you won't ever have to deal with it again and then so you will have the tools so when you are faced with something else that is traumatic you should never be faced with another traumatic relationship type situation. But if you are faced with death, loss of a job, like any type of situation that the world, you know, puts on us that causes anxiety, causes fear, causes depression, suicide, you will have the tools necessary to cope, deal, heal from those things. It's so important. It's so important. So delve deep, like... If you believe in God and Jesus, I was watching two and three sermons a day. I was reading my Bible every day, definitely journaling every day. I was working out. I eat. I was eating right. And when I was even at work and I had downtime, I was doing some um, online classes and stuff, like learning about narcissism. And then I was doing things about it, like that were women's empowerment and like, I did this little thing called Don't Forget Your Crown with Derek Jackson. Like, and it just was, it was like a combination of God, of me pouring back into myself what I lost or what I had forgot, gotten about my, forgotten about myself. And then, um, self, the self-care, the wholeness and the healing and the, and the therapy type things. Like, it was a combination of all these things vigorously for months. Dude, this didn't happen in no two weeks. I mean, I was delved in deep for months. Like, there are things that I still do because those were things that I feel like are helping me on my walk with Christ. There, There's journaling that I still do. It is just ain't about him because nobody need to be talking about him because um, it's not on my radar anymore, okay? But I just want you guys to have the peace the joy, the freedom that I have. I am completely free. And even if I were to see him right now, I wouldn't be angry. Like, it doesn't matter. I don't even care. I'm not angry at any of it. Like, I know that it had to happen and the things and what I have gotten and the woman that I have become as a result of this situation and the and the process that I took to healing 
I couldn't have got from any other situation. So I just want you guys to feel free and to, to be able to be the person that God created you to be and do the things that he created you to do and live in the purpose that he, that he like had for you before you were even in your mother's womb because he had one. And complete healing will take you to the place where he's supposed, where you're supposed to be, where he wants you to be. And in that place is complete joy, complete peace. And I can't like rightly describe it because you guys can't not get inside of me and feel it. But I want, I wish that everyone would have this. So to end this, I want to say that your healing is up to you. It's not anyone else's responsibility. It's up to you. You have to commit to the process. You have to decide that you're going to be the person that God created you to be. And, and you're going to be better after this situation, not worse. You have to decide that in your mind first. Once you decide something, then you can do it. Um, you must be patient with yourself and you must be accountable. You either you need to hold yourself accountable and you need to have one or two friends that you can count on or a family member that is going to hold you accountable to not be in contact with this person, to not gain weight and, you know, eat everything, even though it might sound, you know, bad, but you need somebody that's going to hold you accountable for who they know you are. Like the cute person, or whatever the person is that they remember you as before this trauma, you need someone that's going to hold you accountable to be that person and not let you fall off the wayside and just give up and just, you know, oh my gosh, woe is me. You need people in your life who are going to do that and not allow you to settle. Okay. People don't always like those types of people. They are called honest people. They are called tell you like it is people. They are called don't nobody got time for your excuses types of people. You need those types of people because those people are going to make sure that you live the life that they know you desire inside and that God created you to live regardless of how you feel right now. Strong people. Okay. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the methods that I took towards healing that were the right methods towards healing. I hope that you guys um, are able to use this as uh, guidance to get to the place that you should be like to get to the place that I know deep down inside everybody wishes that they could be and have. Um, so like, comment and subscribe, um, ask questions. If you have questions, if you, if I need to be the person that you text so you can make sure that you don't text your ex, then reach out boo, because I got time and we can talk and we can text whatever it is that you need to make sure that you don't go back. All right. Cause I know how it is. Trust me. I know how hard it is to stop a habit that you've created, an addiction basically, because you're addicted to the person. I know how hard it is. Trust me. I've been there, but you don't got to be there no more, sis. All right. So see you guys in the next video. Bye.